Why is it that my astrology book is any different than any other astrology book out there? Um, the thing about it, my book is, is first of all, it was written by somebody who was looking for solutions, like you, who was looking for answers, and yet he couldn't find one in the books that were out there. Okay, and that is when I dove into this world of mysticism and astrology and numerology and what exactly it is and how is it that it can solve somebody's life how why okay so this is when i'm like okay the information that i've gathered in this 10 years of research that i've done and every day i still do research i still find more stuff that all of this thing that i've collected you know now i think it's time to share with the people now i can say okay look the reason why you know this happened with you is because of this where there are other books you know saying all this stuff too but i say it in a more layman's term i make it as easy as possible where astrology is not see you guys think that astrology is two plus two equals four no that is just a surface astrology is actually two plus two divided by one over two times three squared Okay, now it looks complicated, but if you knew the procedures of how to solve first, how what to solve second, and then you come up with this one answer, that's what astrology is. So if you think, you know, reading your daily sun sign or moon sign horoscopes, even in astrology books, they give you like what will happen on July 2nd to you. How do they know what will happen to you well, without knowing your proper time of birth and place of birth and your latitude and latitude, you know, everything. And so in my book, what I do is I teach you how to look at your own chart, how to look at your own life in front of you, and so you can see what is happening with the planets. You can see why is it that you are not interested in engineering, even though you have an engineering degree, yet you want to become an actor. Why is that happening? Or why is it that every time you keep trying your you know, hardest in a real estate business, yet you never sell a property, if you sell it, there's always some problems, some legal problems, and you just don't understand where your brother or your twin brother might be making all the money in the world in astrology. I mean, all the money in the world in real estate. Okay, so this is why what what my book is about. And in my now in most astrology books, it says that if you're a Scorpio, you should be a detective. You should go into police, law enforcement. And you should become an army general. Okay. Yet at the same time, while you're a Scorpio, you want to be an actor. Does that make any sense? And that's what I saw in all of the books. And some, some go into a little bit of a detail saying, oh, your 10th house. So if your 10th house is Libra and your Venus is in the 10th house, meaning that you're going to shine as an actor and you're going to be uh, a very good artist. And while at the same time, you just want to be a computer programmer. How is it that possible? That means astrology is wrong. No. Again, when you are, when your consciousness and your information on certain things is this much versus what it, it's, it's about this size and you only know this much, of course you're not, you're going to deny it, you're not going to believe in it, but until you know the whole mathematics of it, the whole thing, the whole, you know, the interior skeleton of this thing, you will not be able to see whatever, what's out there. And so this is why in my book I'll show you why in the 10th house, just because it says something, why it's not? Because you have to surgically open that house, okay? So if your Venus is in the 10th house and you surgically open, but at the same time, what Venus does is do, giving you more of the uh, love for the finances. Finance is also represented by Venus. But let's say if you were a creative person and Venus is in the 10th house in Libra and you're just, and the astrologist tells you you're a creative person, at the same time he cannot pinpoint what exactly you should be doing, that's when you surgically open that 10th house, look into it with a microscope and say, okay, you're a creative person, but I see you more as a painter than as a singer. That's what it does. It pinpoints through its degree, through the 27 constellations, through the padha of the 27 constellations. See, in astrology, there's signs. Okay, so there's, there's, okay, there's planets. They're going around the signs. So planets going to go around the signs. So if let's say this is sun. Sun is an Aries. Does that mean it's an Aries? No. You have to, there's also something called 27 constellations, the nakshatra. So if sun is in this portion of Aries, when it's going, okay. But what if sun is here? Okay. Sun is here. Half in 
Aries and half in uh, Taurus. That's how you need to look at astrology too. Because planets are always moving. Just because Sun can never be fully in, a, in Aries. Either will be in one sign before it or one sign after it. Also, what 27th constellation is behind that zodiac sign? That will matter more. Then, what level of that 27th constellation, what level is that? Because there's four levels. It's called Pada, Pada 1, Pada 2, Pada 3, Pada 4. So all these things I go into detail make it more fun for you. You will enjoy it. You will actually be, wow, okay. I want to know what exactly I should be doing at this time. Because in, in your life, you will never be doing just the same thing. Or sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in your same career. How do you do that? You look at through the planets. And so that is why I wrote the book Astrology at the Speed of Light, which you can check out at the link below at krsnobles.com. And you will see the astrology website where a whole other information is out there. And you can get the book through there as well. But also you make sure to subscribe as well. Alright? Thank you guys.